Yeah, these two names, Vaduci and Vigu. Yo, Vigu. No, you, you, Vaduci, F Ducey. No, you, Vigu. No, F Ducey. What the heck did I just do? Today, we're talking about a dynamic mic that I just picked up. It's the Vigu dynamic mic. I really want to let you know too that I did not get this mic from Vigu. I paid for this mic myself and also any changes I make in post, I'll let you know. The only thing I'll be doing is adding a little bit of gain if it's needed. Now I put in the title, the Fiduci SL140 also. So stick around and I'll explain how that competes with it directly. But this is a dual purpose mic. It works with USB and it works with XLR. So you can grow with this mic and purchase it and not have that audio interface. And then as you grow, you get an audio interface. You can add that. This mic does sound pretty good. I noticed a little present boost on this, a little presence boost on this in the high end. I am using right now an SSL 2 Plus audio interface at approximately 90% of the max. So it is taking quite a bit of DB to get these levels that I'm at right now. But I think that if you have, say, a Scarlet 2i2, you might need possibly a mic booster if you're going to be right up on this mic though you could just be able to do it because i think the 2i2 is putting out about 55 db and this ssl2 is putting out about 62 db now this mic is a 24 bit 96 kilohertz mic and so this is what it sounds like in obs i have no filters at all i have no noise reduction no compressor, this is raw footage right out of the mic. I saw the Fiduci and I didn't like the big branding on the side of the mic. So I held off to try to do a review on a different mic. I saw this mic look just like it and I came to find out that it is exactly the same mic. The people who make this mic, the VU, are using the same company who makes the mic that Fiduci does and they chose not to have to use the branding. When I saw that, I was like, I gotta try this mic now. I like that, that it doesn't have the big white letters on the side of the mic. And so I picked it up and I just sat on my desk for a bit and I finally got to it and I'm using it right now and I think it sounds pretty darn good for a mic that cost me $71. Now I'm a Prime member, I picked it up for 71. It can go anywhere between 65 and 90. Um, on Amazon. And so depending on when you pick it up, but it, it's a pretty good sounding mic. And this is a dual purpose mic, which I think directly competes with the Shure MV7. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, the MV7 also has the software that comes with it and you can make adjustments and, you know, compression and an EQ. Well, I do hear a lot of people complaining and giving feedback about that software. And it's not the best feedback. A lot of people saying it's giving them trouble. So yeah, that's a plus for sure to have that software. But if it's not working all the time properly and people are having problems with it, then I'm not sure. And not everybody is going to need that. So to have this mic that costs about 75 to $85 versus an MV7 that's about $250, that's a pretty good savings for a dual purpose mic. Does this directly does this directly compete with the SM7B? No, I don't directly think it does. We'll do a little comparison to see how they both sound. I am going to talk directly into this mic and I'm going to see how the plosives are as I speak directly into this mic. Put your personal property in the proper place. Put your personal property in the proper place. So I wouldn't say that this is the best mic I've ever had for plosives, but it's definitely acceptable. And if you're using proper technique where you're just a little bit off access on this mic, then I think it's just fine. You know, it's, it's definitely something you have to watch out for because I've seen a few times that um, I have definitely pushed the P's to the max. Um, but if I take this cone off the mic so you can look at this, 
it's an all mesh construction that you would see similar on other mics that are out there. And it's all a solid metal construction mic. And it comes with this U mounting that can go from a um, stand to a mic boom arm and can be used like anything else, like any other mic that you that you purchase. This came with a 5 8 to 3 8 adapter, and I'm using that also as I speak. Um, but let's see how the rejection is on this mic. So as we turn it to the side, how does this mic sound when I'm talking exactly from the side of the mic? That's the sound you're getting. And then if I talk directly behind the mic, that's the sound that I'm getting. And we could see the changes as we rotate this mic and come back to the front of the mic. If I talk off this mic approximately about a foot, this is how this mic sounds. And if I'm about two feet away, this is how this mic sounds. So of course, this mic is meant to be spoken pretty close onto. And this is how you would typically be using this mic and pretty much this kind of scenario this close. So tell me in the comments what you think about this mic or if you own the Shure MV7 or the SM7B. The mic is now connected via USB and I had no problem finding the drivers to connect my USB mic. But here's the one thing. They did not show up VU drivers. They showed up Fiducy SL40 drivers. So go look that mic up and you look this mic up. They are identical and obviously it's the same mic. So I just want you to know that even the drivers are labeled Fiducy SL40s. But on this mic, it does have a few options on here to touch and to be able to mute your mic. So right now I'm going to show you and you can listen to how these buttons make sounds as I use this mic. Uh, and I'm going to keep the levels exactly like they are. And even if they are lower, using the USB so you know how they are. And this is how this mic sounds when I'm right up on the mic, which We'll see how this sounds when I listen back. But now I'm going to push these buttons and you can listen to see how it sounds. Okay, and you saw that it was muted. So if I long hold the button, it will toggle between the mic and the headphones. So the mic would be the would so the mic would be the gain and the headphones would be the volume. And just so you know, I'm using my Sony MDR7506 headphones right now, and I'm listening through the mic itself. I'm plugged into the rear of the mic, and I'm getting zero, supposedly zero latency feedback, and it sounds clean. Right now, I'm going to raise and lower the volume in my headphones. Let's see if I can hear that. Okay. Check, 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 check. All right. Honestly, I didn't hear a difference in my headphones at all, but let's go to the mic gain. All right. I'm going to push this button down as I'm speaking and let's see if it drops the gain and I'm going down and I can see that it's dropping. Okay, I'm going to bring it back up all the way. All right, and that's the gain all the way. So I heard and saw the gain drop as I was using the mic. And this is what it's going to sound like when you're plugged in USB. So you're listening to me right now on the SM7B. And this is what it's sounding like with my audio interface, the SSL, at 100%. This is fully maxed out. And this is what it sounds like when I get close up on the SM7B. And right now I'm on the VU mic. And this is the VU mic at approximately 90% of my max on my SSL audio interface. And this is what it sounds like. So do you like the comparison between this SM7B or do you like the VU mic or do you want to spend four hundred dollars for a dynamic mic which is about what this sm7b goes for sometimes it goes on sale for three hundred and fifty dollars 
or are you more the type of person that's looking for a approximately 80 to 90 dollar mic and is this sufficient enough i would say for most people it's definitely good enough for a lot of people and would satisfy their needs for what they're looking for so who do i think this mic is for honestly it does such a great job in the rejection department that this mic is great for anybody that's looking to keep a unprofessional untreated room and keep that background noise down a bit it does a really good job i think it's great for beginners because you can start with the usb input and upgrade to an audio interface and spend some more money and still get use out of this mic but i also think it's great for the traveler um someone that needs flexibility with the usb input and and you could take it and run and gun with this mic and then be home and be on your roadcaster pro too so it's got a lot of versatility and it sounds pretty darn good for the majority of the people out there now if you're looking for a mic that is got a really flat frequency response i wouldn't say that this is your mic by any means it's really for the person who's looking for something that is a beginner to mediocre who is doesn't want to spend 400 dollars or 250 dollars on a mic so it makes a lot of sense for a lot of people and i think that most people will be happy with this mic and i appreciate you stopping in today and discussing this big you mic and i hope you have a great day and i'll catch you on the next video mic review yeah yeah another mic review yeah yeah sorry i just like this stuff it's fun it's fun <laughs>